Alright, welcome to 6.6. .6. There's only one lecture for this, and it's actually an extension of the solving trig equations that we did earlier. But the reason why it was held off is so that you would have an understanding that if you were looking at something like sine of 2 pi equals 1 half, and specifically the sine of 2 pi, you would know what that looked like. That that would be um, something that would have period of only pi. That means it repeats itself again as we go to 2 pi. So if we want all the solutions from 0 to 2 pi, there's actually going to be usually four solutions, right? You get, remember if it was sine theta is equal to 1 half, there would have was only two solutions between 0 and 2 pi, namely pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, right? That's what we were doing before. But when it's 2 theta, well, now we're going to go and capture some other ones later on because they're being brought back. And so if that if this number inside is a 2, you're going to get double the amount of answers, a 3 triple the amount of answers, half half the answers, right? Sometimes it's not possible to do half the answers, so you have to really look at that situation and see if it's possible. So keep that in mind because that's what's going to happen as we um as we solve these guys. So if we want to solve sine, theta, sine of 2 theta equals 1 half um, on the interval from 0 to 2 pi, right, this guy right here, oops, this guy right here, sine, we then are going to be looking from 0 to 4 pi. We're going to have to go longer. That's what I was just explaining. So his method is for you to do a u substitution. Good to keep in mind because it's actually um, a U substitution is something you do in calculus to do integration. So good exposure early on. So we're going to let U be 2 theta. So we're going to let U equal 2 theta. So what we have then is what's written right here. Sine of U is equal to 1 half. And we're just going to worry about that. And so, again, the two times that that happens from 0 to 2 pi is pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. But we know we have to look farther. So what we do know is that it's a first quadrant angle, sorry, first quadrant angle and second quadrant angle. And so pi over 6 was this one. 5 pi over 6 is this one. Now, if I need another one, I got to go all the way around or adding 2 pi, right, which is what he writes here, to each one of these. And we get um, adding 2 pi to pi over 6, we get 13 pi over 6. And adding 2 pi to 5 pi over 6, we get 17 pi over 6. And so those are our four answers, pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 13 pi over 6, and 17 pi over 6, when we go out from 0 to 2 pi. I'm sorry, 0 to 4 pi. And you're thinking, well, we can't do that. I'm supposed to have answers between 0 and 2 pi. Use not your answer. You were looking for theta. So now you're going to substitute back 2 theta and solve. You're going to take 2 theta and set it equal to all of those. So you're going to take like 2 theta and set it equal to pi over 6 and get the answer theta is pi over 12. And we'll see that down here. And then 2 theta equaling 5 pi over 6, 5 pi over 12. 13 pi over 6, 13 pi over 12, 17 pi over 12. And notice, all four of these angles are between 0 and 2 pi. Those are the four solutions. And so that's why they're called frequency equations, because you're going to get more frequent solutions. We were used to getting two. Those two are boxed up here. But now we have to expand, because what's happening is, if we remember our graph from 0 to 2 pi, looks like this, right? This is 0. This is pi in our case, and then this is 2 pi over here. And so we're picking up 1, 2, 3, 4 solutions out of that, and there's where they are. Um, so hopefully that makes sense to you and why they teach graphing first. So we got to go over here and say, okay, cosine 2 theta is root 2 over 2. So what are we going to do? We're going to make sure that we look for them from 0 to 4 pi. Why 4 pi? Because when you're going to get double the amount of solutions out of that. So you're going to extend your period by double. So they're going to do the same thing. They're going to let u represent 2 theta. Cosine u is pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4, right? Because cosine is positive 
in the first and fourth quadrants. And so they're just naming those. Now they're going to add 2 pi to them. So we should get a 9 pi over 2 and yes, a 15, I'm sorry, 9 pi over 4 and 15 pi over 4. So the four solutions from 0 to 4 pi for you are pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, 9 pi over 4, and 15 pi over 4. And now we got to bring them all back in by doing the 2 theta. So we're going to get everybody halved and we're going to get pi over 8, 7 pi over 8, 9 pi over 8, and 15 pi over 8. Just barely sneaking in under 16 pi over 8, which is 2 pi. Awesome. That's what we're going to do um, as we go through that homework. So tangent 3x is equal to 1. So how many solutions are we expecting here with 3? I'm making it big so you can't see down below, or maybe you're looking online at the same time. You are going to get triple the amount of solutions. So what's happening is, is you're letting u be equal to 2 theta. And you're saying, hey, you, um, if you're just going from 0 to 2 pi, um, there's only two times that happens. All students take calculus. There's two times that it's one. In the first quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. I'm sorry, first quadrant and in the third quadrant. And so we're going to have a pi over 4 and we're going to have a 3 pi over 4. But we got to keep adding two pi's to those, right, as we go through. Or actually, we could just add pi until we get six solutions. So we got pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. Um, what's the next one going to be? Adding 2, I'll just keep the model of adding 2 pi. That would be 9 pi over 4. Adding 2 pi would be um, 11 pi over 4. Adding 2 pi would be 17 pi over 4. And adding 2 pi would be, um, to this one, would be 19 pi's over 4. Okay, so notice what's happening each time um, as we go forward. Let's make sure they got the same ones. Okay, so they're going to have a bunch of ones. Let's see if we got the same with pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 9 pi over 4, and then it looks like I made a mistake. Um, so where would the next one be? If I was looking at 3 pi over 4, maybe that's where I made my mistake. That's it. I made it right in the beginning. And I knew it didn't feel right. And so that's why I did that. But this should have been in the third quadrant. So my 9 and my 17 are right. But this should have been a 13 pi. And plus 8, 8 plus 13 is 21 pi over 4. And let's see if we're looking at that 17 pi over 4 and 18 pi over 4. Um, and so plus 8 to 17, 9 pi, 13 pi over 4, 17 pi over 4, and 18 pi over 4. Um, I don't know if that's 18. If I've got 13 and I add 2 pi to it, I should be ending up at whatever 8 plus 13 is, and that should be 21 pi over 4. So we'll check it out. So I believe this is 21 pi over 4, and we'll check it in the end. Okay, so 21 pi over 4. That is sneaking in just underneath 6 pi. Um, and now we're going to divide everybody by 3. And as we divide each one by 3, we're going to get 12s underneath. And so I think that this last one is 21 pi over 12, which would be below 2 pi. So let's check and see if I'm right, because I'm matching on all the other ones. So 21 pi over 4, let's plug it in. What we're claiming is that tangent... Uh, let's go back to the original equation. Tangent of 3x is equal to 1. So let's look. So we got to look at tangent of 3x, and we want to make sure that's equal to 1. So let's take the tangent. Let's first look at his 18 pi over 12. Let's see what that is. So that's tangent of 18 pi over 
4. Okay, and what is that? That's tangent of 9 pi over 2. We got a problem because that's not a pi over 4 angle. It needed to be an odd number, not an even one. So his 18 was incorrect. This is 9 pi over 2. You know that any pi over 2 is undefined for tangent, right? Because it has those asymptotes right there. So we found a, another typo in there. But let's check our 21 pi over 12. Let's just make sure that that one works. So we're going to come in here, and I'll grab my pen again. I'll put it in red. 3 times 21 pi over 4. Well, what's that? We want to see if it's 1. Well, that's tangent of, um, oh, sorry, 21 pi over 12, right? Which would be 21 pi over 4. Well, where is 21 pi over 4? Pretty close to 20 pi over 4, but 1 pi over 4 beyond it. 20 pi over 4 would be right here because that's 5 pi. And we're right here in the third quadrant. You betcha we're positive 1. Awesome. All right, so it's a 21 pi over 4. You can make that change as well. Okay. So, good thing we're coming across this. Now, as we go to example 4 and look at this, we're expecting half the solutions. So we're not going to look everywhere. We're going to only look in half the the range elements. So they're going to let u be theta over 2 and they're only going to find the one time it happens between 0 and pi. Well you know when cosine is equal to root 3 over 2 that's at pi over 6. And so they're going to um, I don't know why he notes 11 pi over 6 is out of the domain. Oh yeah because our domain we're only looking for 0 to 2 pi because we're looking on half the period. And so that's that's the maximum number of solutions we're going to have. And so this one is only going to have one solution. We shouldn't be surprised that it's one solution when we have a theta over 2. Because if it was cosine theta, just alone equals root 3 over 2 from 0 to 2 pi, it would have two solutions. So if you're going to put a half in there, just like with the others, you're going to get half the solutions. coming out of that and so we just get that single solution so if we look at this sine of theta over 3 what they're saying is we should only identify answers from 0 to 2 pi over 3 we'll divide by that let's see if that's what he writes actually he does 0 to pi Okay, not just to 2 pi over 3. So he's not following the exact same thing. Not sure why he's using 1 half when it's a 3 under there. Let's see if we get by with 0 to 2 pi over 3. Well, that's somewhere in the first or second quadrant. If we, signs positive, all students, okay, root 3 over 2 is a 60 degree or pi over 3 angle. That's going to be... Um, 2 pi over 3 is right there. So we only need to identify the pi over 3 angle. Now he's probably going to identify both. That's not a problem. He's going to set his theta over what? Not over 2. That breaks your heart. It was theta over 3 in there. Right? Did it break your heart? Okay. And so there's 3's in here coming through. Um, so you're going to set theta over 3 equaling pi over 3 and realizing theta is pi. And you could set theta over 3 equaling 2 pi over 3. But what's going to happen there is you're going to get 2 pi and that's outside of your range. And so the only answer that um, can happen is, um, and I'm not sure why he has 2, is theta being pi. Pi is going to be the only one that that's going to work for. Uh, a pi over 3 angle would be that one just from 0 to 2 pi. We'd have to go to 2 pi to get the other one. And we're, we can't go there because of the open parenthesis that's there. So interesting as well. Um, and I can talk to Professor Itell about the mistakes so he can fix them for future classes. Okay, let's see if he does this one right. Yep. In this case, he is going to take the period and cut it down by uh, the, the desired range of values and cut it down by 4 and get a 0 to pi over 2. So he's only looking there. 
and the only time that tangent theta is going to be equal to root 3 from 0 to pi over 2 is at pi over 3, that first quadrant angle. And then all we have to do is set x over 4 equal to that, and we realize that we get 4 pi over 3 out of that, and that's going to be the only one from 0 to 2 pi that makes that happen. So these um, frequency ones aren't terrible. Um, they're definitely doable. And so as a last one, sine of x over 2 equals negative root 3 over 2. So again, we're expecting one answer. We're going to worry about the only time it happens between 0 and pi. And guess what? Um, for sine of, let's see here what's going to happen. Let's check this out. So he's saying to only look between 0 and pi. So if we only look in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2, sine's never negative. And so you're done. There is no solution that could happen that way. There is nothing that you could have from 0 to 2 pi that would give you a negative root 3 over 2 because all of it would end up in quadrant 1 or 2 and sine's never negative. And so that's what's happening in his explanation here. But as soon as you realize you're looking for 0 to pi, there is no way that sine can be negative and that's why he's coming up with the empty set or no solution. Pretty awesome that he threw that in there as well. So try these in the homework. 6-6 six, six homework should go pretty well. Just remember if it is, let me just get a big blank area over here. If it's sine of 2x, then you know that you're going to go and get double the amount of solutions. If it's sine of one half x, you're going to get half the solutions, right? And you're going to be looking at half those, half the interval. So just remember that as you go forward. Um, and I think he sticks mainly with sines and cosines as he should. Uh, it gets a little bit, well, we did tangents as well, but it gets weird with cotangents and cosecants. Actually, what we would do is just turn them into their flipped operation. So you probably did this all back in trig again. So, um, just a nice reminder.